Hello. Um, this video is about how to make uh, communication diagrams and sequence diagrams. I have chosen to use the example of the TCP connections that uh, we have in the um, diagrams compendium. So this would be exercise uh, 815, which I'll be going through at pace. So, um, the first thing that uh, we need to establish is what it is we look at here. And um, um, I've made a diagram. Okay, reason, yes. No, that was not the one. Never mind. We just do it by hand. So the the thing is that we have um, a client this would be a server and this guy is a client This is very common um, terminology in networking, and the way we use it here is that the client is the um, device, the network entity that initializes the connection to a server, which is a device which has a service running on a given port. In this case, it's a TCP port. It could be port 80 if it were a web server, but it just sits and waits for someone to connect to it. So. The thing that we are going to show in the communication and sequence diagrams are that the client sends a SYN request and then he will get a SYN ACK back and then the client will send a SYN ACK again. And when that has happened, we have established a connection. And we will do that in the um, diagrams. So, first up, let's uh, start the um, diagrams program. I have decided to use uh, draw.io for this. It um, requires that I disable, or rather that I allow a certain amount of um, uh, what's called uh, scripts and sites. So, um, in the diagrams compendium, I have made a um, quick how-to. So let's do that one. We will start with the um, communication diagram since this is the easiest. I have a spelling error here. This should say communication diagram. I will update this soon. So first of all, determine context and give the diagram a title. As already said, this is about making TCP connections. So let's do that. Um, this guy. So we want some sort of title text. We're going to put it in the middle. Make it bigger, yay! <clears throat> and we, um, this is about establishing a TCP connection. Establishing. Yes. Okay. So this would be the context and giving it a title. Then we need to identify objects and/or classes. In this case, we have two two classes. We have uh, servers and we have uh, clients. So we'll go to the um, URML. And there's a URML thing with yeah this guy with a lifeline. But since we are doing communication diagrams, we are not going for the one with the lifeline. We are doing simple objects. Two of them. The first object is the server. Well, you could, let's start with the uh, client. It's the client. The client is, um, I've put in a colon here, which means that it is the class of clients and the class of servers. So the thing that happens now is that we are specifying, um, what's it called? We're specifying what one does to the other. And in this case, we have um, an association, if I can find it. No, I cannot. 
That's annoying. Uh, that's weird. Yes, this is an association. And we will not be typing anything here. Okay. And um, now we need to decide how to write some text on these things. Um, not title. Um, on this one, we want to add some data, some link. Yes. So the thing that happens first is um, we will be sending um, the infamous soon request. Then we will be, oh, sorry. And it's going that way. Let's do two arrows. Then we will be sending soon plus ack um, the other way. And then finally, we will be sending the finished soon ack requests back to the server. So when all of this has happened, we have established a connection. So let's click away from this one. Um, this is a very simple communication diagram. Um, and as we can see in the uh, how to, we have identified, we have added messages and associations. We currently don't have a sequence diagram, but uh, we will do that now so that we can uh, see the differences. Um, we could compare this to how it should look, <clears throat> which is a commented example. So you see we have arrows on these going back and forth, just like uh, in the example. Okay, so we will continue with the uh, sequence diagram. Just like the communication diagram, we need to have a context uh, and we do that uh, specify the context by giving it a good title. We will be identifying the objects, which will, which must be the same as for the communication diagram. We will uh, add a lifeline. Um, Draw.io has this object and lifeline thing, um, and then we'll add messages and return values and set current occurrences. Yes, let's do that. So, um, this is um, a communication diagram. It looks very simple when you have the um, when you when you only have this. So let's scroll down a bit, and um, let's can we do a new one perhaps new create? Can we have multiple? I don't know if I just killed the other one. Let's hope not. Anyway. Um, so again, we need to uh, do um, some title and uh, the title uh, is the same as last time, is the Blish TCP connection. The, these two, uh, the communication and sequence diagram will cover exactly the same. So the title would be the same and we have the button here, Click two of these, just like before we will have um, two objects and the first one well object this, these are classes so it will be client and it will be server and um, we need to put in the here they call it activation the official name is execution occurrence and we're going to put in one for each And we will have the um, message sending, dispatching a message from one to the other. Uh -huh. And what are we dispatching here? 
we will be sending soon and hack and what's gonna happen next we are sending the same thing back oh that was wrong we're actually only sending a sync soon for the first in the first page and and he and the server will then send the so hack and then we will be sending an acknowledge to this send acknowledge so let's go back to the cookbook and see uh, what it, how it does this we have given a context we have identified object classes. We have determined the lifeline of all objects. For this, um, we are actually, well, the client and the server never dies. It might be inactive, but it's not like it's some sort of software construct that gets destroyed or a piece of paper that gets burned or something. Um, we are adding messages and uh, this execution occurrence is what they call activation. And the return values you could argue that the server is returning the um, the cert hack, but since this is vital for proper performance of this, and this is basically what we are trying to show, it would not make sense to call this a message. And if it, uh, sorry, to call it a return value. If it had been a return value, it would not show up in the uh, communication timer. So this is um, the, um, sequence diagram and let's see if we can find the other one um, I don't know if I killed the other one when I just created something new unsafe changes no did I just kill the other one Okay, this was a bad example because I want to show you that the client must be the, the two objects we have here, client and server, must be the same for both sequence diagram and communication diagram. The send soon, the send soon act and the send act must be the same. I made a mistake in the communication diagram where I returned a uh, soon act for the last one. It only should be an act. And since this is network communication, you will see a, if you open Wireshark, you should be able to see this whenever you start a TCP connection. Um, that's it. That would cover exercise um, 8.15. Draw a communication diagram and the corresponding sequence diagram.